Hello, I'm Andrew Petro with Unicon. This is a simple introductory screencast on basics of DLM. DLM is an alternative to ALM. DLM stands for Distributed Layout Management, and it derives from SunGuard Higher Education's Luminous product. Uh, it was open sourced and merged into the core open source uPortal project, primarily through the efforts uh, of a man named Mark Boyd who um, really did a fantastic job with that. So DLM is now a preferred alternative to ALM and has been present in uPortal since version 2.5.0. The core concept of DLM is to make available uh, fragments, uh, pushed fragments, that are managed as the layout of fragment owner uh, meta users. So what is DLM? Well. Uh, various inputs, really two inputs, come together to form an end user's layout. An end user's layout consists of the fragments that come from fragment owners uh, mediated by declarative configuration of the audiences of these fragments, of who it is that will be viewing particular fragments based on their group memberships or user attributes or, or what have you. Uh, as well as applying personal preferences, where those be, uh, whether those be entirely new uh, layout content tabs that are managed by the end users, or whether those be uh, modifications to uh, fragments that are received from DLM uh, within the bounds of restrictions on what an end user is permitted to do um, by the, the fragment owners through that declarative configuration. And so to take an example, this is an example that comes from a presentation uh, uh, of ePortal status once upon a time at a JSIG conference. Uh, suppose we have a, a library tab, right? Whether that tab is going to be a tab or a fragment depends which layout management scheme we're going to use. Uh, but, but conceptually, suppose we have this tab. Uh, this is the sort of thing that, that was in Yale Info Portal, and that's where this imagery comes from really from that existing slide deck uh, that I presented once upon a time with, with Eric Delquist at a JSIG conference. But here we have a, a lovely library tab. You can, can certainly be proud of this user experience here where there are, are links and search and an indication of subscriber account information and, and news from the library. Really, it's a, it's a beautiful library tab. And suppose that new functionality becomes available through the efforts of library systems programmers. Uh, let's say we're going to have a channel that uh, indicates when various libraries on campus are, are going to be open. And it might have oodles of controls and end user preferences as to which, which libraries we care about or it might not. None of that's really, really important to the story. I'm, I'm just trying to justify that, that plethora of buttons in the upper right there. Uh, but anyway, suppose we have this new piece of functionality that we'd like to include in this tab, the library tab plus, right? That is the story, the use case that we're coming from here. And so under traditional simple user layout management in uPortal, um, through a particular user attribute mediated by the person directory system, uh, the portal determines you know, which template user to base a particular user's layout upon. Uh, and suppose that end user, right, uh, using the features of the portal, expresses some personal layout preference. That is what, what, what is conveyed by that lightning bolt there is they apply a change, and it might not even be to the library tab. It might be to some other tab. They might express a preference in a channel. But they express some preference such that they're not merely consuming their, their template anymore. Their layout does not consist of a pointer anymore. It rather consists of a, a copy of the template layout that has been modified to become their, their personal layout. Well, uh, under simple user layout management, uh, we have that template on the left, and we can go ahead and update that template. And for those users who have not uh, expressed any personal layout preferences, if their layouts consist merely of a pointer to the template layout, then they will enjoy this new channel that we've included on the library tab. However, uh, those users who have, you know, really the power users, those who have taken advantage of the capabilities of the portal, 
uh, those who have, have expressed a personal layout preference one way or another at some point, uh, the template for their layout may be updated in wonderful ways to include new channels such as this, but they will not experience that change. And they have you know, a couple unattractive choices. They could somehow otherwise become aware of this new channel and manually make that change to their own layout. Uh, or they could clobber whatever changes it is that they'd made that presumably they valued, that may be why they made them, uh, in order to get back to a default you know, user experience, a, a base layout, their template layout, and then they might receive the, the updated versions uh, of the template. So really a couple unattractive stories here under simple layout management, but it is simple layout management. Enter distributed layout management where uh, instead of using SLM template technologies, instead uh, the template, as it were, is really a DLM managed fragment that the end user receives because they are among the audience targeted by this, this fragment rather than by a magic username in, in person directory configuration to, to map them to a template user. Instead, this user uh, is part of a group or has the right user attribute or otherwise meets the audience requirements for a DLM managed fragment representing this, this layout fragment. And so there's a dynamic template. And again, under DLM, while you can choose to lock things down administratively so that users can't change the layout and, and content and, and, and so forth of the particular fragments that they're receiving, say this library fragment. You could prevent them from making changes. You could also choose to allow them to make changes to rearrange things or add additional content or RSS feeds or whatever it's going to be to personalize, uh, to, to rather customize their layout to make it their own. And so under DLM, what happens when on the left you see that the template has changed, that uh, we have added go in as that DLM fragment owner, as a meta user representing this layout, and go ahead and add that channel to that layout fragment. Well, under DLM, even if the end user has modified their layout, expressed a layout preference, even if they've expressed a preference on this particular fragment in some way that was allowed through the configuration of, of the permissions, uh, that, that you can configure when you are the fragment owner and you log in and set up the layout in the first place. Um, even if the end user has, has taken advantage of all those features, you still, as an administrator, as the fragment owner, can add in this new channel and have it become part of the personal layout that is eventually experienced by the end user. It, it intelligently merges the updated uh, fragment uh, that's centrally managed with the end user preferences and modifications within the restrictions of, of what is allowed upon that fragment. And so you get this, this aggregation, this merger of your desires and the central changes so that uh, when the library has an improvement to the layout uh, to be, make available to end users, that can be made available. And, and really actually become available to those users and they can enjoy this new functionality without having to engage in any manual heroics to, to opt in to the new channel or, or to otherwise you know, change their layout uh, uh, in an exceptional way to receive this new content. If you have any questions about DLM, this is the sort of thing that I love to talk about and I expect to learn to do some more screencasting about. Uh, and you can contact me at uh, and apetro at unicon.net, and I'd really encourage you to visit the Unicon website at www.unicon.net slash ePortal. Thank you so much.